Woohoo! Welcome back. Tonight we're going to be solving nonlinear inequalities. Yay! So, if you've been watching the videos, you know what an inequality is and you recognize that we've got an inequality here. You may be a little rusty on what it means to be nonlinear. Basically, nonlinear is any time you see something other than just a basic x. So, in this case, we've got x plus 1, which by itself would be linear, except that it's over x minus 2. And this rational expression or fraction basically makes it nonlinear. Some other things that would make this situation nonlinear if we had them, if you had an x squared or an x cubed, if you had x in some other situation other than just plain old x just sitting there with maybe some numbers, then you've got something that's nonlinear. And the problem with nonlinear inequalities is that it boils down to the fact that the x is complicated. And for example, we've got two different expressions, x plus 1 and x minus 2. And depending on what x is, the top could be positive while the denominator is negative. And so even though they're both x's, they might have different signs. And this is what makes it complicated to solve because anything we're going to do, if we multiply on both sides or divide on both sides and we multiply or divide by a negative accidentally, we would have to flip the inequality. But when we're working with x, we might not know we've done that. So this is going to be the, recommenda the recommendation for solving. Uh, it is a little more complicated than when we've got a linear inequality, but this will ensure that you won't accidentally uh, mess up where the inequality sign should face. So first step, actually a lot like quadratics, move all terms to one side. So I'm going to subtract one from both sides. Woohoo! Okay, and now I hear you all holding your breath because you're like, oh no. But the good news is first step is done. That's step one. Yay! We got to get a zero on one side and we've got one. Okay, next step. And this is where you were possibly solving. Uh, solving? Sighing, sorry is we are going to have to combine this. We're going to have to get these together. Since we've got a minus, we do need to come up with like terms, which means common denominators. Um, for this side, our LCD is just this denominator. And hopefully you remember, it's pretty straightforward. If you want to take a one, which is just a one over a one, and make it into an expression that has an x minus 2 in the denominator. We just multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. And not surprisingly, we get x minus 2 over x minus 2, which kind of makes sense, right? If we've got a 1, it should be the same thing, top and bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and in place of that 1, let me see if I've got a nice yellow... I do in place of this one right here. Oh no, I've gone to Smeary Town. I seem to have an ink leak somewhere. Not sure where, sorry about that. So X plus one all over X minus two minus, and instead of the one, we're gonna put in our new thing, our new one, which is X minus two all over X minus two. Now, we haven't done anything that would change the inequality, so we leave that there. And then we do this sub subtraction, the denominators match. So I get all over x minus 2, I get x plus 1 minus x minus 2. And again, we haven't done anything that would change the inequality. I'm going to use a little bit of tape to cover this up. Oh my goodness! Wow! Apparently I had a whole pen explode and I didn't even notice it. Well, let's see if we can survive this. The Inkopolis. No, that would be the city of ink. Ink apocalypse? Maybe that. Okay, so I've got x plus 1 minus x minus 2 
all over x minus 2 is less or equal to 0. Now be really careful when you're subtracting because remember that minus has to go all the way through. I get x plus 1 minus x plus 2. Take a look at that. Pause the Pause the video if you need to. Make sure you agree with how I got that plus 2. Okay, then I'm going to combine terms. It turns out that I get 3 all over x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0, which is pretty cool. And this is going to be pretty interesting because we started out with 2x's, but when we moved the 1 over, we actually got just a constant up top, which means this problem's not going to be as hard as some. Now, it is likely that when you do this, you will end up with an x in the numerator, and then you'll just have to work with two parts. I'm just going to be working with the x minus 2. So let me go ahead and get us onto another page because we're going to need some more room. Pardon me, Sharktopus. So for the next page, I'm going to go ahead and just copy down what I've got. 3 all over x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. And then I'm going to say, okay, I've got my 0. This is what's really important. Got to have a 0. That is the key to doing this method. And then I'm going to look at all the terms. Now, as I said, you might have a term on top with an x. I only have x minus 2. So next step, find the intervals from the zeros or roots. Oh my goodness, where did that E come from? I swear, my uh, Microsoft Word is, is trying to autocorrect how to spell zeros. Zeros. There we go. No one will notice. Good is new. Okay, so what we got to do is we take our x minus 2 and we set it equal to zero. This is looking for a zero. And what I'm writing out is that we're looking for a zero, or sometimes it's referred to as the root, or it could even be referred to as the critical value. Slightly different uses for the different phrases, but they're all possible in this situation. And so if I have x minus 2 equals 0, I can add 2 to both sides, and I get x equals 2. Now, in this case, 3 is just a constant. I don't have to go through this. But if there had been another x up top, I would actually have to go through this process. But for us, all I have is I just have the 3 on top, so I just I have the 1, 0. And so I set up a number line. I've got 2 sitting right here, like that. And I've got numbers bigger than 2, and I've got numbers less than 2. So I'm going to pick, you can pick whatever you want. You could pick a million, or I could, I'm going to pick 3. And over here, you could pick negative 12 or 0. I'll go ahead and pick 1. And so then I want to take a look at what happens to x minus 2 in these three sections. See how I've broken it down into this section, this section, and that section? And then I also want to look at what happens to 3 all over x minus 2. So x minus 2. If x is 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. This is going to be negative here. At 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. Nice and easy. That's the 0. I already knew that. And then if x is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, that's positive. So I've got a negative, and then a 0, and then a positive. Now here's where we have to be really careful. This is the second or third place where a nonlinear expression is going to make things a little bit more exciting. And that is, if you've got something in the denominator, well then 3, 3 is positive, right? So if x minus 2 is negative, then the whole thing is negative. Easy peasy. And if x minus 2 is positive and 3 is positive, the whole thing is positive. And a lot of people say, okay, and then 0 here, but let's wait. If x minus 2 is in the denominator and x minus 2 equals 0, that means this is u for undefined. Undefined. 
And that's going to be important because if we try to plug in two, we're going to get an expression that's no good. And in fact, we could even see that in the original. X minus two is in the denominator there too. Okay, so now what is our, this was our original, but remember we did a bunch of work and we realized we got to this place. We want to make sure three over X minus two is less than or equal to zero. So for less than or equal to zero, less than or equal to zero, that's going to be just right here, right where it's negative. But is it going to include two? And the answer is that's where X minus two is zero, but it's actually undefined. So I'm gonna put a big old open circle there. So my answer for this one is everything from negative infinity all the way up to two exclusive, or I could write X has to be strictly less than two. And this is really where things get interesting because all of this means that even though our original problem had a less than or equal to, so you'd expect a bracket, our answer is gonna have a strictly less than because two is where it's not defined. Okay, so this was a nice, big, long, exciting one. Woohoo, you made it through. I've got one more example I'm going to do, but I'm going to put that in another video because this is going to take some time. So um, you can go ahead and get a break, um, get a snack, get some water, go out, play, um, sleep, rest your eyes, do video games, dance around, whatever you like. And then come on back and Sharktopus and I will be here for another nonlinear inequality. And until then, woohoo, math on. And you're awesome.